Hi, I'm Kristen Cooley. I'm one of the clinical social workers for the Alzheimer's Association. The Alzheimer's Association, it's a national organization, so there's chapters all throughout the United States, and we provide, so there's a local chapter here in Cincinnati that serves 37 counties, so a good chunk of southern Ohio, southeastern Indiana, and northern Kentucky. And you know, there's several tiers to the Alzheimer's Association. We're one of the biggest funders for research. Um, we do a lot of fundraising events for, for research uh, in addition to our programming. Um, we're involved in public policy, and then obviously we do programming as well, which is what I'm here to talk about. So the programming also has several tiers to it. So one of the biggest things that we offer is a 24-7 helpline that people can call whether they're expecting or seeing symptoms in themselves or taking care of a loved one with the disease as well or with dementia symptoms. Um, so that's kind of our gateway to people is through that 24-7 helpline. In addition to that, we do what's called family care consultations, which is a fancy way of saying family meetings where you know, we're meeting with, if someone is early stage, we may be meeting with the person with the diagnosis as well as their family, or in most cases, we're meeting with caregivers and family members. Um, and those care consultations are really, you know, it's a lot of disease education and talking about what typical behaviors that may come along with dementia, communication strategies, along with care planning guidance, meaning, you know, where we can connect them to next once they have the disease disease education there. And then obviously emotional support. This caregiving journey is so much, so it's a lot of that support as well. Um, after those care consultations, we write up action plans for families because I think a lot of what's hard with this disease is there's so many things, so many balls in the air that it can be paralyzing. People don't even know, they may know all of the things that are going on that they need to be doing but don't know what to do first. So we're kind of a guide through the journey then with them. Um, those are kind of the two biggies. In addition to that, we offer support groups, um, we do education programs. Um, those are kind of the key things. We do do some brain health, you know, education as well. All of our services are free, so there's no charge to any of that. We don't have to deal with insurance coverage because we are blessed through grant funding and our fundraising efforts. We don't have to charge, which is wonderful. There's kind of two stories that come to my mind. The first one is if the caregiver is showing dementia symptoms. So literally just this week, there was a DDS caseworker or care manager that reached out to me that said, hey, I have a client with Down syndrome that's been taken care of by parents. So they've always been kind of the three musketeers and dad is now showing dementia symptoms. Um, dad had been formally diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it was progressing to a point where mom was trying to juggle taking care of spouse and son and it was just too much. Um, so, you know, the care manager through DDS referred us in to really dive in to allow mom a space to just be able to process the grief of losing the partner and all of this along with, you know, everything that they've been taking care of with the son. Um, as well as disease education in that care planning guidance. So I was able to touch base initially with the daughter to really walk through some of the services that we offer and now are scheduled to have a family care consultation to meet with the mom and really just you know guide her through what do we need to do with husband and son? So in their situation, you know, it's really kind of, there's no perfect answer with Alzheimer's disease. So um, unfortunately there's no cure, there's no really promising treatment. So it's really getting creative with the resources. So in their scenario, it was really, um, you know, how do we make this work logistically and financially since she has two people that she's taking care of? So it made most sense in their situation to hire someone, a companion agency um, that is knowledgeable with DDS and older adults and bring them into the home versus trying to pay for two separate services, like both of them going to an adult day setting and having two separate fees. So it's really us kind of being there to problem solve, to brainstorm and kind of just be there with them. You know, the other story that I was thinking of is, um, 
when the person with a developmental disability is aging and is starting to show dementia symptoms themselves too. So we're getting more of those phone calls as well since people are living longer. And I think the biggest thing, the biggest challenge with someone that maybe has Down syndrome and is now showing dementia symptoms is this shift in communication where, you know, when there's someone with Down syndrome or a developmental disability, so much of the communication is surrounding, you know, teachable moments and how do we kind of teach them through this. And when someone has dementia or Alzheimer's specifically, there is no more teachable moment. So it's really helping educate families on shifting the way they communicate with someone, which can be a really unnatural thing. You know, we've communicated with people a certain way our whole lives, and that's why things work. So to have to shift that is really hard. So I think in those scenarios, a lot of our support is communication strategies and education around that. There's a couple different ways that you can get in touch with the Alzheimer's Association. We do have a website. So our national website is www.alz.org. If you want to get to our local resources, it's www.alz.org backslash Cincinnati. It has lists of all of our upcoming programs. You know, I've failed to mention before, but upcoming social engagement opportunities that we do for the people with the disease as well, our list of support groups. All of that is on our website. Um, you can also call us locally. We're open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. So our local number is 513-721-4284. Or you can always call the 24-7 helpline any time of day, any day of the year. And that's 1-800-272-3900.